In this lesson, we'll cover grids. We're going to establish a grid for laying out columns and laying out our exterior walls and interior walls for our house. First, we're going to create the grid. Now, I'm currently looking at the first floor plan. I know that because first floor is highlighted in the lower left in my project browser. To start our grids, let's go to the Architecture tab. All the way to the right in the Datum panel, click Grid. Now, typically when you start drawing the column grid, the first point you pick does not contain the bubble, the other point does. Although you can switch the bubble on which end it shows up on the column grid or keep it on both ends. So to start, we're gonna look at the settings in the draw area. I'm gonna verify the line is selected, meaning I'm going to draw a line for a column grid, and the offset on the option bar, the green area, is set to zero. Now the first point I'm going to pick is over toward the left near the elevation marker and toward the bottom. I'm gonna click and then simply drag my mouse up vertically. As you drag, you'll see the bubble appear on the end, and then once you get to the top or near the top elevation marker, click again. If you roll your mouse to zoom in, you can see it has a number one, and it'll count up sequentially from there, one, two, three, four, five, and so on. Now I could continue to draw these point by point, or I can use an offset technique. So in the draw panel on the right, I'm going to click on the pick lines icon. After I do that, I'm going to set the offset to be 10 feet because I want 10 feet between my column grids. Now with both of those set, simply hover over the existing column grid and you'll see it offset to the right or the left. Move your mouse to the right a little bit so it offsets to the right. When you see the dashed offset appear, click, and then move to the right of it again. Click again, and again, and you keep going all the way up to 10 column grids. Now, if it goes beyond the marker on the very right, you can always adjust these and move them after the fact. So that establishes the column lines, or in this case, grid lines, in one direction. Now I need to establish them in the other direction, or horizontal. So on the draw panel, I'm gonna go back to the line tool. Go ahead and click it. Change offset back to zero, because I wanna draw the first one and I do not want an offset for my first actual column grid line. Now with that set, I'm going to start again on the end that does not contain the bubble, or where I don't want the bubble initially. So I'm gonna go all the way to the right near the top. Go ahead and left click, and then drag your mouse left and you'll see the column grid line appear. Drag all the way beyond the first column grid line that you drew. Click again. Now if you zoom in, you'll notice the actual column grid number is number 11. We wanna change that to an alpha scheme, A, B, C, D, for example. So let's end the column grid command right now. Click modify in the upper left or hit the escape key. Now to change the number 11, simply click on the number 11 slowly twice, it'll highlight, and then just type in the letter A, make it capital, and then hit the Enter key. That will reset the sequence for the next column grid we offset, because it's going to use the last one that was drawn. Go ahead and roll your mouse to zoom back out, and we're going to continue now offsetting that column grid. So go back to the Architecture tab, all the way to the right again, click Grid. On the Draw panel, select Pick Lines. On the offset in the options bar, set that to 10 feet. And just like we did before, now hover over the grid line that we tagged or changed to A. Once you see the offset appear below it, click. Click below the next one, the next one, and the next one, all the way up to the letter E. So you should have five grid lines horizontally and 10 grid lines vertically. Now all of these are offset 10 feet. Go ahead and click the Modify command to exit the command. Now, if you didn't space these correctly or if you need to change the spacing, all you have to do is click on a grid line. And once you do, you'll actually see the dimensional value appear and you can change the dimensional value. Now, if you want to change the side that the grid line bubble is on, once you click a grid line, you'll see a checkbox on one end or the other end. You can uncheck mark the checkbox on one end, check it on the other to display that bubble on one end or the other end, or you could display it on both ends. We're gonna keep the bubbles on the left side and the top. 
Now, if your grid lines are too long, you can select all of the grid lines just by dragging a mouse over those. Click the end point of one of the grid lines. You'll see a little bubble appear or drag point, and then simply drag that point up to the desired length that you want all of those selected grid lines to be. Click in the background to deselect. And if you need to reposition the grid lines inside of your elevation markers, simply window in all of the grid lines, move your mouse over one of the grid lines, and you'll see the move icon appear. Hold the left mouse button down, then simply drag those to their new desired position and release the mouse. Click in the background to deselect. You also can move the elevation markers by selecting those and moving them out or outside of the actual grid lines. So as a review in this lesson, we looked at creating grid lines. We're going to create the grid lines to use for our column layout and our wall layout. We drew one grid line first, and then we use the offset tool inside of grid lines to offset the rest a given distance.